next round. Just look around this ballroom, which is ringed with Corinthian pillars. Take a look. Right? I want you to know that the rest of this house was also built with a rigorous symmetry that originated with the ancient Greeks. Now I point this out because I want you to know how deeply engraved Greek culture is in our everyday lives. And I'm not just talking about great architecture. I did some additional words in addition to the prayer. It's coming from another first day, coming from a nation, as you say, with the highest possible culture. Part of this culture is the very reverence of the word and language. There is no celebration without saying a few words beyond prayers or anything. <laughs> Music and musicians is our band, but some really, even if it's serious talk, is another one. So here I'm a bit of a Greek, Thessalonian, and Athenian with American training. <laughs> <laughs> dear Mr. Mayor, dear First Lady of this city, I am Shinde McRae, honorable ambassadors, consul generals, officials and members, members of some places of Greece, members of the Federation and Greek Societies of Greater New York. This is a great day of joy and thanksgiving. And thanksgiving to God for giving us worthy to celebrate once again the Greek Independence Day honoring the heroic revolution. <laughs>
on this issue I mentioned that is so essential around the world. Two voices of conscience calling the world to compassion and understanding and mutual effort on behalf of migrants with all the challenges they face. Anyone who watches the reality of the world today appreciates how Greece has stood up in the midst of this extraordinary moment of change and transition in the Middle East, in Europe. The biggest migration since World War II. And Greece has borne the brunt, but Greece has borne the brunt with compassion and strength. And all of the Western world owes appreciation to Greece. I had the honor of meeting with Prime Minister Tsipras when he was here in September. I expressed my admiration for all that he was doing, that Greece was doing in the face of so many challenges. And I personally, and I've said this publicly many times, I think it is up to the European Union in more ways than one to come to the defense of Greece and offer more of a helping hand. All of that history the Archbishop went over all of that foundation of civilization and democracy that we acknowledge comes from Greeks and the Grecian people should come with it a sense of obligation from the rest of us to be there for people who have given us so much, to be there for a nation that has given us so much. Hundred and ninety-five years of independence, Archbishop, your words were so powerful. I felt transported back in time to that year, to 1821, to feel what it must have meant around the world to see these patriots rise up, the ultimate underdogs win the day. And I think they would appreciate, think of those brave freedom fighters, I think they would appreciate, they'd probably be amazed, and fast forward 195 years in this beautiful mansion in the middle of modern New York City. They are being celebrated, they are being remembered just as if their deeds were yesterday. And there's something beautiful about that, honoring that independence movement and all it stood for. Now, the Greek people took that spirit and brought it here. And New York City is so much the better. And something striking, we know that from the early 1900s, there was a large Greek community in lower Manhattan. And as the community thrived, the community understood it had to make its imprint and it had to uphold its faith and its culture, and so was created a Greek Orthodox Church in Lower Manhattan at 155 Cedar Street. A group of five families got together and purchased the building to create a church, and St. Nicholas was born. 